love and joy in your heart. So for the first time tonight, come on, crouch head. Let's give it up for Matthew Swan. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Lovely to be here. Are you all looking forward to some comedy then tonight? Yeah. So you all love a bit of comedy, do you? Yeah. yeah. You all love a bit of comedy? Yeah? Well, I love a bit of history! Yeah! Yeah! So we'll get ready for a night full of learning. Yeah. Three hours of learning. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah? Well, I'll jump straight in with the British Empire. <laughs> yes, my favourite period of history. Actually, founded in 1766 BC, which stands for before cheese. Okay? That's a little known fact, um, because before the invention of cheese, the world was a dark and grim place. For example, imagine the world without Wensleydale. Alright, not popular cheese. And then AD, therefore, stands for after daring. Okay. So take that back home with you. Um, so, British Empire, founded in 1402 before cheese. Come and bear. Um, I won't do that one, um, <laughs> So, yes, in the summer of that year, um, the British decided that they needed to find some new resources, some new trade, some new friends, because we don't have many. <laughs> But no, and so um, King George the Tenth. Sorry, what was that? Are you questioning my facts, my knowledge? I know everything I'm talking about. King George the Tenth. That's right. You heard it. The Tenth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so he decreed that all British would would go forth and find new lands and new people and explore the world. And so, on the 18th of August, 15 BC. Um, <laughs> strange people. <laughs> Anyway, that's when we set out, and there's something very important about that date. And I'm going to go over here. Can you tell me what's important about that date? No, I thought not. <laughs> I'll tell you what's important about that date. It was a Monday. Oh. Exactly, and everyone wants a Monday, don't they? Right, what was particularly important about this Monday was that it was the, the founding of what is now known as the Working Week, Monday through Sunday, because no one likes to start projects at the weekend. <laughs> And so we set out sailing on this Monday, and by about midday, we had discovered a little island known as Australia. Lovely, warm and inviting, lovely Australia. And we, um, we met the, the natives. That's what you call them, the natives. They're not locals, they're natives. That is the correct term, natives. <laughs> and so we met with them, we had some tea with them, okay, and we enjoyed, enjoyed some tea, and they brought forth some resources and some gifts they thought that we might like to trade and to share. Now the first thing they brought along was a, um, a long, hard, wooden, hollow stick that you blow really hard into to recreate sounds of flatulence for comedy effect. <laughs> the didgeridoo, obviously. But the next thing they brought along was a local delicacy. Now you can use local in this way. <laughs> Because native delicacy sounds stupid. <laughs> so they bought this local delicacy, and it was kangaroo bollocks. All right? Yeah, and the British love them. Big hunks of meat that we can roast. Yeah, that's what the British like. Yeah. And we thought, okay, this is some nice gifts. So we thought, okay, so let's let's give them a gift in return. And so what we did was we gave them an accent. Um, <laughs> which is now known as the Australian accent, very popular. Um, it was just a spare one we had lying around, we've got plenty in reserve. Uh, and we thought, yeah, well, we'll seal the deal, we'll have a sleepover, okay? Nothing, nothing naughty, nothing dirty, just your average meal sleepover. Um, and it was actually, actually, that's a world record that the British set. Oh, yes, the world's most distant sleepover. <laughs> Look it up in the Magna's Book of Records. Because fuck Ginsters. No, not Ginsters. Guinness. <laughs> anyway. So in the morning, we had a bit of a problem. And the problem was with packing. Because we couldn't get everything into our, into our bags. 
Now the bollocks were fine. They went straight into the bag, no problems, fit in nicely. But the long, hard, hollow sticks of wood that you blow through to recreate sounds of flatulence for comedy effect didn't really fit into the hand luggage. <laughs> so what we had to do was recreate or invent miniature versions of the uh, of the uh, long, hard, hollow wooden stick that you blow through. You just um, <laughs> and we had small versions of them, right? Small like souvenirs, okay? And that is how the flute was invented. Okay, <laughs> that is a little known fact, but you can keep that one. <laughs> The invention of the flute. Now, I have been looking around, and I am just going to stop for a minute because I'm not going to lie, I am a little bit disappointed. Um, oh, yes, well, you'll find out why in a second. I'm a little bit disappointed because I'm sharing with you some golden nuggets of history, some valuable, valuable bits of information, some wondrous knowledge, and not one of you, not one single person in this room, is taking notes. <laughs> okay, I'm sharing you, with you this wonderful information. How do you expect to remember it if you're not writing it down? Okay? And yes, there is a quiz later on, after the three hours of learning, right? <laughs> How are you gonna pass the quiz if you're not writing things down? Yes, you've hurt my feelings. Yes, I'm taking this personally, but you need to write things down. <laughs> well, I'll go back to the history, shall I? <laughs> you can absorb it. <laughs> So after Australia, we left, we had our flutes, we had our bollocks, and um, there's nothing funny about the flute. <laughs> Manly British instrument. So we sailed off from Australia with our flute and our bollocks, and we found a new island um, on the Tuesday morning, and um, it, was, uh, it was New Zealand. Now, I've got a geographer, so I've got no bloody idea where Old Zealand is. But I couldn't give a shit, to be quite frank. So, New Zealand. Wonderful British colony. Oh, so we thought when we landed there. So, we met the natives, had some tea, and they came along with their gifts and their resources. And the first thing they came along with was some sportsmen, quite a bit of rugby, um, as we're boring. Uh, and then they came along with an overabundance and obsession with sheep. <laughs> And we thought, this is no good for us. We've already got whales. <laughs> we don't need two of the same. So we felt a bit bad for them. So we gave, we gave them an accent. Well, I lied. We reversed the Australian accent and gave them it backwards. <laughs> um, and, then, and then Ashley, the, um, we, we let them have the world's most innovative architect, William Shakespeare. <laughs> now, what he did in New Zealand was he built the world's first and largest statue of Zeus. Now, for those of you who don't know who Zeus is, he's Jesus' brother from another mother. <laughs> and for those of you who are less ghetto than myself, that means half-brother. <laughs> Wonderful. So we had a spot of lunch because they had some food kicking about, and we got a bit bored, so we left on the Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> well, now we got a bit lost, um, so it took a little while to find a new place. Um, but by Thursday morning, um, we came across Canada. <laughs> now I love Canada. And I'll tell you why, Canada is one of the best places we discovered, right? Because that place literally oozes with syrup. Yeah. They've got rivers of syrup, mountains of syrup, the birds, the bees are made of syrup, the trees, the grass. They've got fucking syrup coming out their asses. There's so much fucking syrup in Canada. <laughs> and we tasted it, it was quite nice. <laughs> but it wasn't quite right for good British bacon. So we tweaked it. We altered it, we tasted it. It wasn't quite right. We tweaked it, we tasted it, altered it, tweaked it, tweaked it, tweaked it, yeah. <laughs> Until eventually we invented golden syrup. Yeah, that's not in fact that. That's nice, isn't it? The British invented golden syrup in Canada. Now that is good for good British baking. Syrup cake, syrup pudding, treacle tart, syrup on a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to leave Canada a little bit early um, because, you know, we just needed a lot of, a lot of uh, syrup and hadn't really given them much, so we just kind of left. Um, uh, and we got a bit lost again. For some reason, we're not very good navigators. Um, but by the Saturday morning, we landed on the north coast of India. Yes, very exciting. India, what are you laughing at? 
thank you, the north coast of India. Now this was a little bit different, we had to take a new tact. They were already, well, I suppose, civilised is the word. Uh, they had cities, um, no that wasn't racist slur. Um, <laughs> they had cities, they were civilised. Um, so we kind of, we asked them if they wouldn't mind us replacing their administration with one of our own and kind of taking charge of it. And they seemed okay, they seemed okay with it. They didn't really speak English, so we kind of had to read their body language and the hand gestures. Um, I mean, that's actually where physical psychology and sign language was invented. Listen to that fact. Listen to that fact. Uh, and in actual fact, I'll give you an example. This. Everybody's seen this. Fantastic. This used to mean, hello, welcome, come into my house, share my food, share my wife, have a good time. Yes. It's lost meaning along the way. Um, there we go. Be careful next time you use it. Um, so yes, no, the first city in India we came across was the city of Korma. Now, <laughs> it's kind of like okay. the weather was mild, and um, and suddenly a, a creamy, kind of nutty, kind of um, feel to their culture and the people. Um, I mean, it was lovely, um, and it, you know everything tasted very good. There were streets of yogurt. There were buildings made of saffron, and every now and again there'd be a little rainstorm of coconut and raisins from the Peshwari Naam clouds. <laughs> But some clever English fucker decided to stand up and he said, Oh yes, well, you know, this is, this is very mild, it isn't very mild, you know, we're, we're British, we're British gentlemen, we're British, yes, we can, we can take something a bit hotter, yes, yes, hot, hot, hotter carry, yes, we're men, we're real men, we can take hotter carry, yes, we can take hotter carry, yes, go south and find a hotter carry. <laughs> so, um, all the other Englishmen, in fear of their manlyhood being, you know, brought up in, you know, approached in a negative manner, they decided to sound like, yes, 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 what, 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 he's right, he's right, he's right, isn't he? Yes, what to carry, men, we're men, we're men, yes, we're British men, let's take this, let's take this over here and go south, let's go south, let's find new places for the British men, 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 yes. <laughs> men. <laughs> and, and so we did, and the next place we came across was uh, Madras. Um, <laughs> really dull city, to be honest with you, just being red. that kind of mastered building with some chilli powder, um, other than that, a bit dull. So then we decided we'd head further south, and there were two modes of transport that we could use at this point. We could use um, either the, the steamed rice train, or the Dal Canal. And we went for the Dal Canal because we are sailing people. And so we took the onion bhaji south, <laughs> down the Dal, and we came to Vindaloo Bay. Now this was a mistake. <laughs> Because we are British, and we cannot handle the Vindaloo. But we won't tell anyone that way. <laughs> and so, shortly after that, we, uh, we got back on our ships. Um, and I don't know if any of you have ever spent some time in a small wooden ship with four or five hundred uh, men who spent an entire day indulging in curry, but it wasn't a pleasant journey. <laughs> Uh, and so we went home, and on the seventh day of the week, we rested. We rested at home, had some tea, had some korma, because we'd learned our fucking lesson. <laughs> had some syrup cake, played the flute. <laughs> Always paying attention. <laughs> and that was it. It was a good week for the British Empire. It was a very good week indeed. And, you know, we still celebrate that week in, in today's modern kind of customs. We. We like to, to roast on an open fire outside large chunks of meat, whether it's raining or, or whether it's sunny over the summer. We like to order we like to order curries that are far too hot for us. Um, even though we, we know the consequence will be sitting on the toilet the morning after, crying our eyes out, asshole exploded, and calling for our mummies. <laughs> and they won't come in because they know what you're doing. <laughs> and what's the other thing? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You know what? <laughs> Bring back the British Empire! That's what I say! Yeah! yeah. Thank you very much.